gentlemen, Inverted 2017 is here, and with it, it has brought some features which came sort of mid-year around the uh, the 2016 release. So the R2 and the R3 release brought in some subscription features for subscription customers, namely the Shape Generator, which is something I've covered already in a video. What I didn't cover was the R3 functionality. Primarily, that was the Connected Design plugin, which is this little thing you see down at the bottom corner. So that came in sort of uh, towards the end of 2015. Uh, which was Inventor Product Release 2016. I did a video on it. It wasn't brilliant. I then spoke to Autodesk about it. They were like, yeah, yeah, well, look, we're going to fix it pretty soon. So I held off doing the video, and I thought, right, I'll just do it when 2017 comes out, and here we are. So the connected design add-in, it's this little glyph down here. So this is new in 20... Well, for most people that aren't on subscription or didn't go for the R3 release of 2016, this is new, and it's pretty nice. If you, if you adapt to it and you use it for what it is and don't expect it to do things that it can't do yet, it's a really nice bit of kit. So I'll go over it in a nutshell. Connected design is a way for you to share your design with people around the world without having to package up, zip up, pack and go things and send them stuff in email attachments. It's really good. It's a sort of one-stop shop collaboration method for sharing your design. So what we've got here is an assembly. It doesn't really matter what it is, but it's an assembly either way. And we're going to launch the connected design plugin. So that's this, this little thing down here. Now you can move it around. You couldn't do this in 2016. You can move it around. Not quite sure why it's got a white border around it. Don't like that, but you can now interact with it, which you couldn't do in 2016. You can close it down if you don't use it. You can reset the position, or you can just give it a click and it'll open up this uh, connected design plugin on the right hand side, which gives you a design feed. Essentially what you do, what you do is you click this button down the bottom, which is design share this view. The idea being you want to show this design to somebody on the other side of the world, in another office, wherever. You give the, the session a title. So the fact that you're sharing this model, you've got to give it a title. That title could just be the file name. It could be whatever you want. And then you could put a comment in here. So please uh, give me your feedback on this design, something like that. You can then pick and choose whether to include IP, component names. So you can see this assembly has component names in it. It has a parts tree. Whether or not you want to include that is, uh, that option is available to you. That's, so that's good. Part properties as well. Do you want to include things like texture information? You can include that there as well. And then you've got to type in the email address. This, so this is where it kind of isn't refined yet. And there's room for improvement. It doesn't have its address. It doesn't have an address book. So you can't pick and choose uh, from your, your company Active Directory list, for example. You can't uh, go for your Outlook contacts. What it will do, though, is once you have typed in someone's email address manually, it will remember that person's name and email address for next time. So that's a good thing. So you type three email addresses in here, and then you click Start Design Share. It'll then package up the graphical information for this file and then sends it to your A360 uh, account. So this is all A360 based. Now, the recipients of this design share need to then create an Autodesk account. If they don't have an Autodesk account, they'll get an email saying someone's shared a design view with you, log in here or create an account, and then they'll be able to open it up and look at it. So what I'm gonna do is uh, go to my A360 uh, website, which is uh, gonna launch up in this browser here. Here we go. And then I think, uh, which one was it? This is uh, uh, ST1017, which is that one there. So if I click that there, that's the design view which I've just created. And this is what the recipient's going to see. They'll get this login screen, they'll get those tiles, and then they'll say, OK, let's see it. And it'll launch a browser session, an in-browser viewing session, without the need to download anything. This is all natively supported in your browser, which is absolutely fantastic. And the resultant file. The resultant file looks really good. It looks really good. Now, some of the textures haven't come through perfectly from this assembly, and that's that's not great. That's not brilliant. But in most cases, do you care? Probably not. You can change the lighting if you want to. So we've got a couple of different uh, lighting settings in here with background and lighting. So you can change those around if you want to. So you've got photo booth there. You've got uh, tranquility, which makes things stand out a little bit more. Dark sky. So you've got a couple of them there. Riverbank's a nice one. That's quite sort of cool and cool and calm but um yeah it brings through some of the textures just fine so you can see that carbon fiber texture just come through uh, it's a little bit dark in some places but you get the idea whoever's viewing this will get the idea it looks pretty good so you can display lines uh, you've got performance and appearance settings where you can you know include uh, reflections on the ground shadows uh, you can change the anti-aliasing which is the sort of the jagged edges you can turn that on and off depending on you know whether you're working on a potato or a pc or not 
uh, navigation and selection, some options in there. So there's quite a lot you can do here. Uh, you've got um, some view and standard view commands, orbit, pan, zoom in and zoom out, walk around, fly around, camera interactions. But then you've got something like this, explode model. Now this is brilliant. This is brilliant when you're working on an assembly. Explode model allows the recipient to grab the slide bar and then explode the assembly out into its component parts, which is just phenomenal. And it is so smooth. It's so smooth. Look at that. Look how lightweight that is. That is nice. That is really nice. So that's good. That's good for the recipient. Uh, you've got properties dialog box here where you can select an object and then you can see uh, the, the well, it hasn't actually exported the information all that well. It is still early days for this utility, by the way. It's going to be improved. This is what Autodesk are likely going to use in the future for all their collaboration efforts. So it's in its first iteration and it will improve over time. So at the moment, it's not perfect. Uh, but they'll get there in the end. And then what the recipient can then do if they hit this little uh, messaging icon up here on the, on the top right, they can then add a comment. So they can say, well, okay, Neil's asked me to give him my feedback. So I can say, uh, I like it. I like it a lot. So they can post that comment down to the uh, to the design feed and that'll then post it in here. Uh, and then you can they can share they can uh, can they I haven't, I actually haven't used any of these buttons here download what's this going to do that downloads the collaboration file so they can use it later on i guess i guess so yeah yeah uh, the, so the recipient can look at your model they can comment on it what they can't do yet again there's no there's no way for them to to put markups on arrows bubbles clouds that kind of thing all that sort of stuff I expect to come in the future. This is all feedback which I've gave the team who are responsible for doing this. Uh, and by all means, I think there's a give us feedback button down here at the bottom. If there's anything you want to see, click that, give them your feedback. I guarantee you there's someone on the other end of this who will listen and will get in touch with you. They are quite passionate about making this work. So do get in touch with them. Do let them know what you think. So once that's done, uh, the, the guy who's sourced the, the design feed, which was me from my inventor session, I've put a comment in my, the other session, so I was sort of role-playing another guy, and you can see here it says so-and-so has commented on the design share, and then I can click that, and then it'll open up the link, and then I'll be able to see the comment that the other person uh, written. So th there's your collaboration working in action. It's brilliant. It is really good. So if you use it for what it is, if you if you can work within the limitations of it, it's a really good utility. And it's all there in Inventor 2017 ready for you to use. You just need an Autodesk account. The recipient needs an Autodesk account. And then you're good to go. Once you finish with your design chairs, you can actually click this design chair link here on the right-hand side. And then you can just end it. You think, right, we're done with it now. We can end that, delete the file, and then it'll just vanish. All done and dusted. Pretty good. It's pretty good. And it's all there inside your Inventor session ready to use. Or you can just close it down and forget it ever existed. Entirely up to you. So that's connected design in Inventor 2017. Use it if you want. It's a pretty good kit. I like it. It'll improve over time. If you're quite passionate about it, do get in touch with Autodesk and let them know what you think and get involved in the development of it. Be a part of it. All right, thanks very much, guys. If you like that, do press like, subscribe, comment, all that stuff. You know what I do. And I'll see you in the next video. Toodles.